Hi, my name is Angela Wallace and I'm a project manager with the Aquatic Monitoring and Management Team at TRCA. I'm excited to talk to you about the first fish habitat restoration project that has been completed as part of the Don River Mouth Naturalization Project. The Don River is located in Toronto and the mouth of the river is about two and a half kilometers east of the CN Tower. Back in the 1800s, the Don River had two distinct outlets into the Ash Bridges Bay Marsh and the river itself was quite sinuous. At this time, there was also stone hooker ships that removed rock and shale from along the shoreline. The stone was used for building on land. This altered and limited the fish habitat along the Toronto shoreline and left it quite plain and lacking in complexity. Here's an image of what the Don River looked like before the restoration work started. There was no wetland, um, or there is no wetland, and the mouth of the Don River is a straight channel. Uh, so this channel here is known as the Keating Channel and it has hardened edges and a 90 degree bend. So the river actually comes down this way and then out this way. Here's a closer look of the, at the Keating Channel looking out into Lake Ontario before the construction work started. This area is prone to fretting during extreme weather events and to overcome this issue, a brand new naturalized river mouth is being created. The Don River Naturalization Project is also known as the Portland's Flood Protection Project. This project is being led by Waterfront Toronto and is funded by all three levels of government. The City of Toronto and TRCA are also partners on the project. This is a massive river restoration project and one of the biggest infrastructure projects in Toronto's history. Over here on the right, you can see uh, the Keating Channel and so it will continue to exist uh, when this project is done. But over here on the left, you can see the new naturalized river mouth. TRCA conducts a large portion of the natural environment monitoring that is associated with this project. The construction of the new river mouth is expected to be completed in the fall of 2024. This project includes one kilometer of new river channel and its associated floodplain, 13 hectares of new coastal wetland and four hectares of terrestrial habitat. The new river alignment will get rid of the 90 degree bend and the design will allow for increased water levels without flooding the area, which will unlock the land for revitalization. This is a great project for both flood protection and improvements to fish habitat. The Portland's flood protection uh, project is a massive undertaking. For the remainder of this presentation, I will focus on the first sub project that has been completed, and that's the Cherry Street stormwater and lake filling project. And that's uh, over here in the sort of top left-hand corner of the project site. Construction began in December 2017 and was substantially completed in November 2019. This is what the area looked like in 2017. Uh, Esrock Key uh, is this land mass that's jutting out here located near the end of the Keating Channel. And immediately south here is where the new river mouth will outlet into Lake Ontario. The project involved filling in Lake Ontario around Esrock Key. Uh, this is a time lapse showing the filling in uh, in 2018 and 2019. And here's an image of what is present there now. There are a couple of notable features with regard to fish habitat. Uh, the North Cove right here, and this is a berm fish uh, berm shoal that is open to the Keating Channel. Uh, the West Cove down here, this is an enclosed area with two carp gates and uh, the shoreline that's connecting these two coves. This area has rocky shoals extending about five to 10 meters under the water. In this photo, you can also see a large drainage channel across the middle of the site, and this channel will eventually be filled in. Here's a drone video from 2020. We are just passing the West Cove over here, and this is the connecting shoreline in between the coves. Uh, and you'll notice in the coves that there's quite a bit of woody material. So if you look here in the North Cove there, you can see underwater there's woody material there. We're now looking into the Keating Channel as it is to uh, today. For each of these habitat uh, locations, there was quite a lot of rock and anchor wood added to the system. So in this image here, you'll see sonar highlighting the underwater tree stumps along the outside of the property. In the North Cove, which is the open shoal berm at the end of the Keating Channel, there was over 5,000 meters squared of fish habitat that was modified and restored. Here's an example of what, um, a closer example of the fish habitat that was installed. So again, you can see, like I said, the, the rocks and the underwater logs. And here's a, an image underwater of one of the logs that's under there. Here's the West Cove. 
You will see that part of the image is missing. That is because the site is within the path, the flight path of the Billy Bishop Airport, and our drone team could not fly over the entire area. This area is enclosed and has two carp exclusion gates. You may have noticed the drone videos that there is a series of dead standing trees in the West Cove that extend up and above out of the water. Uh, there is also additional woody debris and rock uh, that has been added into this cove to provide fish habitat. This cove here, um, because it's enclosed, was actually planted with native aquatic vegetation. And here's a couple of images of the plants that are growing in that cove now. On a lake, you need to get permission from DFO, which is Fisheries and Oceans Canada, and as part of the Fisheries Act authorization for this project, TRCA completed the fish monitoring. We used a variety of methods including traps, electrofishing, and underwater video. As part of the authorization, we had to show that at least three native fish species were using each of the newly created habitats. Prior to the construction work, we completed quite a few electrofishing transects in the area. We had 144 samples in our database for the 10 years prior to construction. 14% of the samples had no fish caught and the remainder of the samples, we predominantly caught three species. These are Emerald Shiner, Gizzard Shad and Alewife. And these three species are more lake-like fish that uh, prefer cool water. So the three main species made up 94% of the total fish caught. Um, and in addition, common carp were found in a quarter of the samples um, in the Cherry Street and Keating Channel area. So although they, there wasn't a lot of common carp, they are found in quite a few of the samples. Post-construction, we captured seven native species in the North Cove. The North Cove is the open cove near the mouth of the Keating Channel. We found five native species and two non-native species. The species were bluegill, largemouth bass, pumpkin seed, rock bass, spot tail shiner, common carp, and round goby. Common carp and round goby are the non-native fish species. This is more of a warm water fish community. And what's interesting to note is that smallmouth bass, bluegill, and rock bass were not caught in any of the 144 samples collected pre-construction in the Keating Channel. We've always known that these fish are in and around the harbour, but they weren't caught in the Keating Channel itself. Um, and this is where an analogy that has been used quite a bit in this project comes into play. And so the Keating Channel is like having, you know, a house or a condo without any furniture. So now that uh, the furniture has been installed and the habitat has been installed, the fish are coming to use that area much more than they were before. In the West Cove, we found eight fish species. So this cove is the enclosed cove of two carp exclusion gates. And good news is we did not find any carp. Uh, we did find seven native species and one non-native species. They were bluegill, largemouth bat, northern pike, pumpkin seed, rock bass, white sucker, yellow perch, and unfortunately the invasive round goby. So none of the four fish uh, from the pre-construction monitoring sampling uh, were found in this cove. Our video of the fish in West Cove in 2021. You will see there were quite a few fish using the cove on this day and we've seen them a couple of times using uh, the cove in these large numbers. Um, you'll also see some of the underwater habitat that was created and you might notice a wee bit of algae. Uh, we're hoping that the algae will subside as the aquatic vegetation becomes more established and uses uh, of the nutrients that are already in the system. And finally, along the connecting shoreline, we actually found 11 fish species, which is uh, really good. So 10 native species and one non-native species, and the non-native species was the common carp. Um, so with respect to the Fisheries Act authorization, we did show that at least three native fish species and actually quite a few more were using each of the habitats and although I didn't discuss it in this presentation we also showed that the physical materials used to create the, uh, the habitat remained on site for two years and that 80% of the planted vegetation was alive and su successful for two years. In conclusion, uh, Waterfront Toronto has successfully created two fish habitat coves and Rocky Shoal fish habitat and both of those coves are being used by at least three warm water species, um, including uh, species not caught in the Keating Channel during the 10 years prior to construction. So it looks like increasing habitat complexity appears to be an important part of improving fish habitat in the Toronto Harbour. 
So thanks for listening. And if you want uh, some more information, you can go to the Portland's website or free, feel free to send me an email. Um, I look forward to coming back and presenting about the improvements to the fish community after the new uh, river mouth opens in a few years.